Welcome back to the channel, and as always, if you're copy trading, you're an absolute moron, and you deserve to lose all your money. And with that out of the way, we're going to look today at a company called C Limited, uh, ticker SE, trading at uh, $76. And this is uh, a position that I have recently entered. So I started looking at uh, this uh, stock due to very, very interesting um, fundamentals. So first of all, what do these guys do? Let's take a closer look. It is an interesting kind of company because it has a similar structure and uh, um, business model to Amazon in the sense that uh, they have the retail side. So <clears throat> they have the the e-commerce, right? The uh, buy something from the internet and getting delivered at home. Then they have the digital entertainment, which is online video games that have been very successful at. And then they also have a digital financial service business. Now these guys operate in uh, uh, emerging economies, Southeast Asia, Latin America, Brazil. Uh, the vast majority of their sales are based in Southeast Asia, around 70%. And uh, in terms of uh, their operation, E-commerce is the largest one, although it's loss making. Uh, that's 70% of their sales. While dig digital and entertainment and financial services represent the rest. However, what's interesting is that these two are not only growing rapidly, but generating a lot of free cash flow that uh, the company is using to propel the whole operation forward. And uh, that is something uh, definitely quite quite interesting. So. In terms of uh, uh, why am I looking at this stock, I mentioned that the fundamentals look interesting, but there are other reasons as well as to why I want to do it. So first of all, uh, it has X uh, US exposure. Uh, at the moment, most of my book is geared towards the US, um, where <clears throat> the, there has been some news recently that uh, the consumer sentiment is weakening. We had recently uh, retail sales coming out and they haven't been that uh, stronger. And I also have at the moment other positions that reflect uh, the strength of uh, certain demographics, uh, which I'm not going to get into at the moment. But um, I see an opportunity here to get long exposure to uh, a broader uh, demographic outside the US where it is expected that in 2024, there's going to be a positive uh, growth GDP environment. Now, the stock is already around 100% year to date, but I would argue that uh, there is room for the uh, company to keep going up. So if we look at the current valuation, it's 29 times uh, next 12 months B, which is not onerous uh, if, if, if we look at uh, how this compares to the sector. Now, if we were to compare this, uh, say with uh, other players, there's a there's a very interesting chart that uh, we can generate. But actually, hold on, I'm just gonna pull that up on screen in an Excel sheet that I put together. So yeah, that's better. So if we have a look at no. Huh. Right, so if we have a look at uh, the valuation, uh, we see that uh, even though this stock is valued certainly high relative to some market peers, uh, it is actually representing a higher valuation than some of the companies that are certainly very established. We have PayPal and eBay here with uh, uh, a PE that is about half than this company. Uh, Alibaba, of course, uh, which is the Chinese kind of party. So earlier this year, during the month of May, we saw this neck to neck, right? In terms of valuation with uh, Amazon. And uh, it is also still below Mercado Libre in Latin America. So arguably the market is quite liking this stock. And you could argue that uh, the valuation may be propped up because we are experiencing a phase in the market at the moment 
where uh, value and small caps are being uh, punished. Uh, they're, you know, they're being uh, dumped, uh, seeking more risk and and seeking more growth stocks. Also, the company valuation for uh, C is uh, 40 billion. So this is currently in line with what the market likes. So that is one, but also if we were to have a look as to how this year looks like for these guys, uh, you can see that uh, in terms of growth, they are by far the absolute uh, winner, at least based on their projections, right? Now, something that uh, admittedly is a bit of a risk is the, the current valuation that we're seeing here. And yes, I typically try to stay away from that. But in this particular case, I've made a bit of an exception because if you look at the uh, PE for year two and three, it actually normalizes and it's actually getting closer and closer to Amazon. Uh, and I do think that these guys can deliver based on what we're seeing from the business. And why is that? Well, first of all, this is a company that uh, expanded a lot throughout the pandemic. And then they struggled quite a bit. So the 2022 period started uh, in 2023. And you can see that they, uh, they lost money, right? Uh, and now they are getting at a stage where they are getting... Uh, that EPS growth coming back. So they're going through a turnaround that seems to be working. Part of the reason why they struggle was, uh, well, we, because they have three different sort of divisions for different business lines, there were plenty of issues. But the most important were, first of all, um, that uh, following the end of the lockdowns, uh, the growth that you saw in the digital and determined sector slowed down. And also they lacked the infrastructure that uh, it is required to run a logistics company. But now we are getting at a point where those, uh, those issues are starting to dissipate. So management has stressed that uh, they have been able to adapt uh, to, to the market and have the infrastructure to perform the, the logistics uh, work that is required. And at the same time, they are also experiencing growth in the uh, gaming uh, division. So, for example, if we see the comments from the last uh, earnings report, uh, they have Free Fire, which is one of the largest mobile games in the world. And uh, I have seen different sources that point at this being the uh, the single one most downloaded game in Q1 in 2024. So uh, that coupled with uh, confidence statements from management confirming that they have a clear roadmap from uh, for, for profitable growth is uh, certainly very enthusiastic. Now, um, we mentioned that uh, uh, growth has, has been a little bit slow. And I think... Uh, uh, that could be a risk uh, uh, in this stock, but we will know that about when the uh, next earnings report come. And I'll mention later the structure that I've selected to benefit from that. But uh, in general, uh, we see that uh, uh, this, uh, this company may have some risks down the line that we have to be aware of. First of all is the uh, DXY, because obviously these guys are based in Singapore, do most of the business in Asian countries. So they're going to have that currency exposure that we're going to have to keep an eye on. Uh, the dollar has been doing quite well recently, so I don't think there's going to be a further improvement uh, on that price. Now, the other thing is that uh, uh, the projections for growth uh, are pretty solid in those countries for this year. But also because of that, many central banks in those places are going to start uh, their quantitative easing. They're going to start uh, dropping rates. And I think that will have a positive impact for, for this uh, stock. Um, aside from that, uh, you see that the company 
and we can see here in some of the latest materials you see that uh, overall this is what i mentioned earlier the e-commerce uh section is uh, losing a, a little bit of money but well, frankly who cares because they're generating so much money out of the other segments that uh they can pay for that handsomely and uh, the the whole way in, the, in which this thing works is that uh, they are uh, aligning all these three businesses into one to increase that ARPU generation, which we see here is uh, starting to pick up. Um, so that is going to get more traction as the games and the services that they offer are interrelated. Uh, and particularly that, that game that I alluded to earlier is getting uh, significant, significant engagement uh, in, in social media. So with that, um, I do think that uh, these guys are poised to having uh, a good year. Now, uh, in terms of the structure, um, we are seeing the stock already at uh, 76, okay? And uh, I think that uh, the August 16th earnings date may or may not, because it's not confirmed, be the actual earnings date. So the way I've structured this is as follows. This is a bit of an opportunistic trade, not only based on the fundamentals, which of course are part of my analysis, but also based on the actual uh, options market that uh, it's available at our disposal to, extra, to express this view. I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, the stock has had a pretty good run, and I think that will continue, but I don't expect a huge move forward. But look at the price of the options here for the September uh, calls selling at 585, uh, and you can, you can short the August ones at 455. So when you uh, do that on a one-to-one -one ratio, uh, these calls are obviously a little bit out of the money. Uh, you are setting up yourself for potentially handsome rewards without expecting a massive move. Now we'll have to see <clears throat> if the earnings state is, come, is taking place on the 16th of August. If it doesn't, then it's very likely that uh, uh, we increase significantly the chances of this trade going right. But Obviously, that would leave us as well with uh, the long leg uh, open uh, during that earnings report. And that's exactly the way uh, I would expect things to play out from here, with the stock potentially going to, say, 100 if the next report is really good. So that's the structure that I'm following. I hope that was helpful. See you soon.